So here is one of these farm tech poles which has bad LEDs. They're a bit weak, they're not actually failed. Sometimes they fail completely, but they're actually a bit weak, which means it's got a limited range and it works quite close up. I've identified which LEDs are weak. There's different ways of doing that. I've actually got a test meter which I use, which I can actually measure the actual output individually. I can actually measure the strength of the LED beams. But there's also other ways you can use like a, uh, a phone camera or something like that to actually visually see the brightness of the LEDs, which is actually a really good way of comparing the brightness levels because it's really easy to establish whether you've got one which is a bit weak and one that's not coming on at all. Not all phones will actually display the infrared beam. Some can't see it at all. Like my iPhone, for example, cannot see the infrared, but my Android tablet can see the infrared. Or my security cameras, for example, can also see the infrared. So if you've got an Android phone, maybe it'll work for you. You can actually just look at each beam. Um, the very top one is the indicator, so that one won't be much. That will just be the actual you know, red-green indicator, but all the other ones obviously infrared. And that's a nice easy way of figuring out which one's which. The trick is to get these poles out, let's take all these screws out the back. I've still got this top one fully in. Um, I've already loosened these, the other ones, but to actually slide the circuit boards out, which you slide out the top, right, you take a little rubber cap at the top, right, black pole, right, rubber cap, pull it off, and then you have to actually lift all of these lenses out. Now you don't have to take them fully out, you just have to lift them out enough so they're not touching the circuit board anymore. You've got to clear the LEDs inside. Now the trick I use for this is I get some side cutters and they've got flush cut, so the bottom of them is actually flush. Now, or if you don't want to cut them off, what you've got to do is get underneath the actual lens and lever it out. If you go from the side like this, you can just pop it out like that. And you just keep doing that for all of them. All right? And the, the flush bit means it's easy to get underneath the sides. See, that's so they stick out. So you've got to go down the entire thing and lift all of these out with the side cutters, just like that. Then they can all lift out easily. It's the easy way of getting these lenses out. You don't squeeze hard, just enough to grip them. Because it's got like a little lip around the, the top. All right, so you just got to do is just keep repeating that for every single one. And then they will. Sometimes you get ones like this one's quite stiff. I mean, there is a risk you can break them, that can happen. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're a bit stiffer. So now I should be able to take that screw out and slide that circuit board out. Okay, so I've already got the other ones out. Like I said, you don't take them all the way out. Sometimes they actually screw into the plastic and you can just leave them sitting there like that. Sometimes they do fall out. If they do fall out, watch out because there's a washer on them. Don't lose that. Put it clear. Yeah. What you also have to do to get the circuit board out is you kind of have to turn it a little bit. So, so there's also a modification I've got for these to protect this switch because people tend to push these switches too hard and damages them. So anyway, so we've got the lenses facing upwards. So here's the actual lens, there, complete lens. So they do pop in a little bit and they do put out of the way enough to get clear. Okay, so I've just taken all the screws out, let's make sure they're definitely not touching on that. Now you can't just pull the board straight out usually, sometimes you have to tip it a little bit. It depends how lucky you are, but this taste is actually coming out nicely. So slide it out nice and gently. If it does catch, you'll know about it, you don't want to be catching it, so you just caught this in, which is why you do it gently. There's a the circuit board out. So I've just marked which LEDs are bad compared to ones I found from the pole. So it's the fourth one from the bottom, so which is this one here. This one's weak. And the first and second one down, which is here and here, they're also weak. So it's, in this case, D11, D12, and D62. So those are the ones I need to look at replacing. Now what we actually do is strip the board off. Now you've got some little screws in here, which go into the posts. We've got to take these out. So you've got these screws here, like this. There's one in that post, there's another one in this post. They're not on every post. You can see this one doesn't have one, this one doesn't have one. They're there to make sure it does lock in properly, because if this is subject to an impact, and these screws aren't in here, it can actually pop off the posts, and that then dislodges everything and causes misalignment problems. I've seen this in some of the older ones, where they have service mount LEDs, and the actual boards have actually got some movement in them, and it can actually twist sideways, things like that, and cause problems with alignment. This is why these screws are in here, just to help secure them in so they definitely can't pop out if they are bumped or something you know we've got to take the screws out then we can lift it off these posts we've got to do both ends the middle section can stay as it is because it's in three sections so there's a joiner here and there's another joiner there all right so the middle section is okay so after disconnect the middle section we only got to disconnect the top and bottom sections all these do is um push the fingers out because these posts have got slots in them and it just expands them 
so it locks onto the circuit board. Flip it around so you can see it. It's got one screw there, one screw there instead of being separated more. Of course, you've got the battery holder and things like that. That's the way I've decided to do this one. So, to get this out, it's actually really just straightforward. You literally just lift it up, okay? But do it gently. Don't try and lift the whole board up in one go. Just do it a little bit at a time on each post, okay? And each time it will cut a bit further because you don't want to bend the board too much because you could end up fracturing the board or or could end up cracking a trace and all that. So it's up there fairly well now. All right. Now I can actually get underneath my screwdriver as well and just leave it as up. Now I've got it basically lifted up. All right. Just like that. Like that. Like that. And like that. And we can then pull it off this connector. Okay. So it's got pins that go this way. You see them there, maybe? And that just pushes on, so you slide it off. And then we can repair this board, which is replacing these two LEDs. Right, so I'm going to also strip off the bottom section while I'm here, using basically the same technique. By doing it in these stages, just taking it gently, you're reducing the amount of flex on the circuit board, and this reduces the chance of damaging it. That's all it's about. And circuit boards are fairly forgiving, but if you abuse them, then you would have a problem. There's the bottom section. Put this to one side. I say there's nothing wrong with that bit. Now you can repair these. So let me just show you this. LEDs are polarised, and if you look at these particular ones, you can see through them. So I'll get closer so you can see a bit better. Right, I'll look at the M1 here. See, they actually have the anvil, which is like a triangular piece on the left hand side. Just trying to get the light off it so you can see it maybe. I don't know. It's hard to see, but you can see there's a triangular piece on the left hand side, large one, and a small one on the right hand side. That middle one's probably easy to see. Maybe the M1 is actually. M1 might be easy to see. And see, so they're all the same orientation. So when you get a replacement LED, you have to make sure that it has the same orientation when you fit it, see that? Now these also have a flat on one side, which isn't always so obvious to see. So it's all circular right round, see it's circular. On this side it's got a flat on it. See it all flat on that side, in line with the pin. And the longer pin is the positive, and the shorter pin is the negative, effectively. Simplified terms. So the flat is on the negative side. LED markings have a positive marking, right? So the positive is the non-flat side. And you can see the flat on this side, you see that? So these little things you have to pay attention to before you fit the new LED, otherwise you could put it in backwards. The simple way is just to look at the orientation of the actual anvil inside it, and make sure that when you put this one in, you put it in the same way around. You do not put it in that way, because it won't work. All right, let's get this LED out. The simplest way of doing this is to get a soldering iron, decent tip on it, Get some first solder on there and just flood it basically. Desolder both pins at once and sometimes it'll just fall straight out like it has. See, it's just dropped straight out. Dead easy. I've also got the advantage here that I actually have a desoldering gun. So I'm actually trying to clean the holes out of the desoldering gun. You can use wick if you want, if you've got desolder wick, or you can just very carefully try and do it just by poking the, the pins through as you melt in the solder, okay? But for me, I've got the soldering gun, so it's just easier to use that. Just like that, that's that one out. All it does have got these little lumps on them, all right, like this. Kind of see it there. Thing is, these don't actually go through the circuit board in this one. They don't pass through the holes. So I'll put those into the holes, and you see it stops on those flats on the legs, which is no good. We've got to get these to sit right down. So what we've actually got to do, we've got to cut these legs off right where these bumps are so that the legs will pass through the circuit board. Okay, just like that. Again, check the orientation, make sure it's correct. Drop it in place. Hold it down with your finger so it holds it straight and then solder it back in. Don't overheat it. LEDs don't like getting too hot. Okay, just give it just a little bit, get it settled down, make sure it's down nicely, and then just flow it again because it is from the top. Okay, don't give it too much. But we do want to flow through to the other side of the board. That's that one done. So now we just have to do the same thing for the other one. Alright, so I saw the LEDs replaced. Now it's going to give the, the circuit board a clean a bit of IPA, lots of proper alcohol, just to get the flux visions you off. Don't leave any mess on the board. 
It doesn't really matter that much, but it's just a good thing to do is to get the residue off and just leave it all nice and clean. And I might have to use a brush, sometimes I need to use a brush, but sometimes just what give you a wipe like this is absolutely fine. We can reassemble it and retry it. I bet it works now. So we'll assemble the bottom piece, just put the top piece in there. So it's basically a reverse of what we did before. Make sure you get the pins lined up into the sockets, don't be one pin off. You know, I'll show you that. Don't don't do that. Or that. Has to be that. Okay, lined up perfectly. Slide it in and then push it down onto the pins, onto these posts. Okay, again, basically reverse what we did before. Try to not flex it too much when you do it. Right, now we can put those screws back in again. So you can see the witness marks in each post where the threads are, where the screw was in there. So just put the screws back into the same posts. It shouldn't really matter that much as long as it's secured. If you do it in the same post it came out of, it's actually a lot easier to reassemble. Because there's already a thread cut into it, it's just a bit easier. This makes it a bit simpler. Okay, we slide that back into the post and we can try it out. So now, all we've got to do is put these lenses back in again. So let's push them back in. Now, I've got one other modification I'll do to these poles. It's a preventative maintenance thing, I suppose. Well, preventative damage thing. I actually make these little covers which go over the switches. This is a very early version of them. The later ones are slightly different. They've actually got a bit longer. There's like a little finger that comes out the side. Two or two fingers each side which come further down. And they clip around the switch. So there's the top of the pole. And this is the piece which goes over the switch. Now what happens is these switches, because they're really hard to feel through the rubber cap, people will push them too hard. You know, they'll be pushing and pushing and pushing really hard trying to see what's going on. If it's not powered up, they'll be pushing it until the light comes on. Well, sometimes they push them too hard and they can break the switches. So I actually designed this cap which goes over the circuit board there at the end to protect the switch. And it just slips over. So you have the board like this and you have this sort of slot goes over the circuit board and the big square goes over the switch shaft. So we'll put it over there like that. Sits over and that's it. it. Sits on there. Now say so the newer version of this particular design of the cover it has two little fingers which, which clamp over the switch so it actually holds itself in place. That's all you've got to do. On this earlier version I've got to put a couple of little drops of glue just to help it in place just so it doesn't fall off. It shouldn't do anyway but it just helps ensure it. That's why the newer version's got little fingers on it, so it holds it in place without doing any kind of gluing. So you just slip it on and that's it, done. Okay, that helps to protect the switch. So if someone is pushing on a rubber cap, when they push hard, when they push all the way down, the switch actually goes below the surface. And so then they're pushing on the surround instead, they're pushing on this orange piece, which is pushing directly on the circuit board. So it's much safer for the switch. It's much harder to damage the switch. It's not impossible, but it protects the switch quite a lot. It also means when you are pushing on the top cap to try and feel when the switch is on and off, you actually come down and you feel the big platform that makes up this area. So you feel that hit on the rubber cap and you go, okay, that's it, that's the bottom of the switch. Whereas normally, because this is so small, you don't really feel it. So this is much more obvious when you're actually pushing and it stops on the end. That's like a confirmation that I'll push the switch right down. And that works much better. I've actually forwarded this to, onto FarmTech for them to replicate this. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but I sent it to them. Well, let's try it out. Better work. Turned on. We've got a green light. It's working. Okay, if I turn this away, it should go red. And it does. So, the LEDs are actually working. Obviously, I need to do a distance check to make sure they actually work over a distance. Because they were working before, but obviously they were weak. I just need to make sure that the distance it does now is greater than it used to be. And this actually turns quite a long way on the sensor. That's pretty good. But the sender is very narrow beam. The actual LEDs they use on these is very narrow. This has got a narrow range, so you have to make sure this one's set quite precisely, right? See it's coming on off. But this has got a much broader range before it goes off. So you can turn it much further. The red sensor is much further than the black one does. Right, that's working. I'll go and check some ranges and stuff like that to confirm it's definitely good. Then we're done. Hope you found it interesting.